So there was a certificate of immediate review filed in this case. Has it been withdrawn? Has there uh, been a ruling? Your Honor, we also have a court reporter. If your court reporter is here, we'd like uh, it to be taken down if we're discussing this case. Okay, but hold on. I can't do anything if this is on appeal. I don't want to waste y'all's time. Is the certificate of immediate review still pending? Well, I would assume that problem. the court would have known that when the court scheduled it. I mean, so we didn't even. I, I'm asking this. It's just sitting there. So here's what the court does is it's sitting there and there was something filed. So I'm trying to see, is this still uh, pending? Do we know? I, you know, I'm not being mean. I'm not being I'm just trying to figure out you what's going on. Mean, <laughs> so I'm just trying to figure out what's going on because I don't, you know, there's never really anything in there. So I don't know if it's still pending, if they accepted it. Okay, uh, is Ms. Hood on? Let me just make sure she's here. I wanna make sure that everybody that associated while we're speaking about this case, okay. um, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, okay, so you don't know that's so the whole thing. No, 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 I didn't say I didn't know. I want to have my entire team here to address the I, court. I, I'm you see who's here. These are only people that are here. Okay, well, Ms. Hood was, she was sitting there. I just text, she's waiting for to be let in. No, Ms. And Sullivan? I promise you, everybody that is in, there's no one left in the waiting room. Okay, hold on one yeah. second then. So, Galaxy just 13 get... 5G, sir, let me see your face. Robert, Robert, can you hear me? You need to change your name to Robert Sullivan, saying that you're Galaxy. I know you're on your phone, but you, sh you should be able to change Galaxy to Robert Sullivan. Thank you, Ms. Bristol, because I don't know who people are. Okay, do I have, uh, let me see if any of these other people here. Yeah, I don't see anybody. All right, so there was a certificate for the immediate review file. Has that been withdrawn or has there been a ruling on that? Because, I mean, there's It has been withdrawn, Judge, um, after we were able to verify, confirm the issue that was dispute, which was the property. At that point, um, the petitioner had decided to withdraw their certificate or application for interlocutory appeal so and i don't have anything i would say the court wasn't notified that's what i'm saying so but there was something fun like it was continued but we haven't heard so did so you how know do we even, how do we get on the calendar if the court wasn't notified how do we get back on the calendar uh because there was a continuance order that was issued on the 20th because there was but how did we get it on the 20th calendar we put, it was still in we put y'all because when y'all filed it i was like all right let's set this out here to see where this is going because if you filed it by then it should have been considered so moving right along uh <laughs> and i don't have anything uh in here that it's been and if you folks chatted to see where y'all are at and what we're ready that, for a hearing we 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 don't have any other movement but to move forward on this tpo your honor um mm -hmm. the case has been reset since may 6th because as you can recall there was some evidence that was taken on the 6th of may of 2022 but then we continue it to see whether the parties could come to some type of agreement we right. got back on the calendar then there was some issues um, right after May 6th, on the 10th of May. Then <laughs> after the contempt action, you know, then there was a removal. And then we were back on the calendar again on the, the 1st. And then at that point, I had filed an application for uh, interlocutory appeal. Then I was waiting for the court to sign it. Then we were back on the court again on the 8th of July. And then at that point, um, the court has signed the certificate of immediate review. So yeah. now we're here today. Um, you know, right. I had provided all my notices to everybody to be ready because at this point, we, you know, there's we're not going to be able to come to a resolution. All right. So um, uh, I don't see your client. Um, she was on earlier and not connected to audio. So I don't know. Let me see. <clears throat> Works that you're in your car, so don't drive during this hearing, okay, Miss Sullivan? Can you 
Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Okay, there you go. It works. Okay. All right. All right, everybody. So we got a court reporter here. Y'all know this bill. I don't know who ordered the court reporter, but uh, let's see. Ms. Hood, you're the one arguing today, right? Yes. Um, okay. We're the one that ordered the court reporter, Your Honor. I'm still right. looking for my officer because he's supposed to be on as well. There's no one in the So are both parties going to share a takedown, Ms. Hood? Um, no. You know, it. Ms. Bistro, are you going to share the takedown? Because if not, we're we're okay with taking care of it. Yeah, I don't think Mr. Sullivan's prepared to share in that today. So we're not sharing your takedown. This is good. Okay. And I know you ordered it, but you know how I like to put, you know, gets paid within five days of receiving invoice. If not, you email me, we come back in and we get paid. So uh Ms. Bristow, you've informed your client, right, that he cannot avail himself or copy the transcript. I'm happy to have a phone call with him right now to ensure he understands all of that, if the court would like, or if he wants to come on. If we are able to know what her hourly rate is, I think that would be helpful. Okay. Madam Court Reporter? Um, I don't know. I would have to call my office. It it changes and I don't keep up with that. Your Honor, and, she is, yeah, I, I don't, she's not a liberty to say that she's an independent contractor with a service that we contract with. So she wouldn't know that. Probably to provide that. that to the court. <laughs> she can't no. tell her hourly rate. I mean, it's not that she can't, there's an hourly rate for a court reporter. But it, right, but that may be different because she is contracting through a company. Uh, no, that I, mean, I, I understand that, Ms. Ms. King, but he has a right to know what half of it is. So, Madam Court Reporter, if you only can answer this question, do you have an idea? We know it's not $500 an hour, so do you have an idea about what your hourly rate would be? So, for a half a day on Zoom, I believe it's almost 200 but then the takedown of it, however, I don't know how long this hearing is scheduled for, um, that could be uh, like another 200 It depends. So you get a flat rate. Out. Okay, hold on, Ms. King. Uh, let, please let me just talk to the court reporter, please. So, okay. court reporter, so you charge a flat rate and then the appearance fee, right? And then hourly right. for take. Okay. Yes. So, what is your hourly for takedown? Um, uh, please, Ms. King, please let me talk to the court reporter. She can at least give us an idea. If we can get past this, <laughs> go ahead, Madam Court Reporter. I believe it's around 200 because there's a separate rate for uh, a Zoom hearing and then the separate rate for takedown. So there's two different costs. Right. So what's, I, the, what's the takedown? Give us an idea so he'll know what expense he's looking at. Ms. King, he's got to know. He has the right I, to but, but I'm not saying he King. does not. If you let okay. me finish, I am not, not saying that he does King, not have King, the right no to ma'am. No, ma I'm talking to this court reporter. She's the one who works this first thing. Madam Court Reporter, give me a range of what, what you're, you're asking her is. Madam Court Reporter, you're what taking is up our time. Miss, no, Miss, Miss King, not again. Madam Court Reporter, yes. Got your appearance fee. What is your range for takedown on Zoom per hour? She just told you that. I believe it's around 200. I'm, I can text my office right now and get an no. exact figure. So it's not a $200 appearance, it's $200 an hour also. No. Ms. King, so let's talk with Ms. King. There's one horse, one rider. I am not, we're not doing this today if this is how this is going to start. If she can let me do my job. Madam Court Reporter, do you yes. charge an appearance fee? Yes. Okay. Then you charge a separate hourly rate. No. So it's just an appearance fee of $200 for half a day or a few hours, right? I, I think it's $196 for a half a day on Zoom, yes. <laughs> there you go. Roughly. Gotcha. So it's not going to go, it's two thirty. It ain't going to go more than a few, a couple hours, period. Period. All right. There you go, Ms. Bristow. Hopefully that has given you your answer and your client can make a decision. Yes, it has. Robert, would you like to share in the takedown today? It would be roughly around $100. Uh, and you're on mute, so you can say yes or no. You don't have to explain anything. Just say yes or no. Put yourself off mute. 
Yes, I do uh, uh, consent to uh, my portion of the fee. Great. Yeah. We're good to go. She's going to send, so uh, Ms. Bristow, if you can make sure that Madam Court Reporter has your email so that they can send you a copy of the invoice at Mr. Sullivan, you've got to pay them within five days of receiving the invoice. All right. There's going to be one horse, one rider. Do we have a cop here? Because there's no one else in the waiting room. That's her. Um, I just got off the phone with him. He should be ca calling in now, Your Honor. Let me just double check and see what the issue is. Just give me one second. What's the name of it again? I'm sorry. Miss King. Miss King. No more. No more out of you, Miss King. Uh, no more. We're, we're going to have someone to represent okay. my client. I have a right to do okay. that. No, no, no. Is it you or Miss Hood? Which it's is all it? of us. She has to okay. be attorney. But Miss King, stop interrupting me. You asked stop. a question. I Let me. I, I said, Miss Bristow. Miss King. Bristow. It's Ms. Hood's uh, witness. Thank judge. you. That's it. I call out a name. That's what it is. It's that's what it is. Please. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a five minute break. Everybody is going to take a second and remember they will show nice courtroom decorum and professionalism towards me, whether they like me personally or not. You will not interrupt me. You will not answer a question unless I am addressing you. Hey, doing Corporal, if you could do me a favor, take yourself off mute, raise your right hand. And do you swear a firm testimony you're about to give is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, so if you watch, I'm not sure where it is, the computer, uh, the blonde lady with the glasses, uh, she's the court reporter, so if you watch her, she may give you some hand signals. If you drop your voice, she can't hear you, uh, maybe like me, talk too fast, something, but anyway, at least watch her, okay, because she, she may have to get you to repeat something, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, she can't take down right. head nods or head shakes, so you got to answer with yes or no, things like that. All right, Corporal? Yes, ma'am. Oh, Sergeant, sorry, you just changed your rank, like in a couple minutes. Well, congratulations <laughs> on the promotion, because like 30 seconds ago, you were a Corporal. Sergeant, okay, I stand corrected. All yes, right, let's so, so go ahead. Okay, thank you. Can you please state your name for the record, please? I'm Charles Cornelius McClellan. And where are you employed? City of South Florida Police Department. And how long have you been employed there, sir? Three and a half years. Okay. And what division are you assigned to? Patrol. Okay. And were you assigned to patrol um, on about April 3rd, 2022? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And do you have an occasion to investigate domestic violence cases? Yes, yes ma'am. And how many domestic violence cases have you investigated? Over 300. Okay. And investigating those cases, do you occasionally do a report on them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the purpose for doing those reports is basically to, um, you know, keep a record of any observations you make um, or any statements that were made at the scene. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. By policy, we have anything that deals with domestic, any domestic disputes, we have to have documentation. Okay. Um, did you have an occasion to be called out at, I believe the address was 337 Mossy Cup Drive? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you tell the court um, why you were called out to that location? Um, that was, at, looking at the history of the call, that was the third time an officer responded to that call. I just so happened to be um, the last one to respond to that call. Um, and you advised that you wanted to know what happened. Yes. Can you tell, you know, what was the reason why you were called out to the actual location? Okay. The notes uh, stated that the the young lady, Miss uh, Sylvian, uh, she was- Miss Sullivan? 
Sullivan was getting into a verbal argument with her husband, um, and he basically struck her with a broomstick. Okay. So you were called out for domestic violence disturbance at that location. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you had an opportunity to speak with Ms. Sullivan while you were there. Yes, ma'am. All right. And in speaking with Ms. Sullivan, um, what, if anything, did she advise you about the occurrence? Uh, she just basically said it started with an argument. Um, the husband was basically saying that he was tired of her. He didn't want to be with her anymore. Um, I'm sorry, Sergeant. I'm sorry. Where is Mr. Sullivan? Because I'm looking at his ceiling. You got to stay on camera, Mr. Sullivan. Don't know what you're doing. I apologize, Ms. Hood and Sergeant. You got to stay on camera. Go ahead, Mr. Sergeant. I'm sorry. Okay, so you were saying basically that he was trying to get her out of the house. Yes, ma'am. Because okay. the, there, there was a the previous call, the previous call, I didn't respond to it. Was another officer is basically saying that she didn't feel comfortable going into the residence, getting her belongings, so she wanted an officer to escort her. Okay, so there was another occasion prior to you coming out where an officer came to the scene in reference to a domestic disturbance. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, did you have an opportunity to to see any visible? um injuries on Miss Sullivan when you arrived on the scene yes ma'am myself and another uh officer he uh she showed him the visible markings we took a picture of it and we seen it was on her lower glute lower I'm sorry officer lower what her her left cheek of her her left cheek of her bottom okay and um, you indicated earlier that you did take a photograph of that. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to show you what is Martha's um, uh, petitioner's exhibit 12. Give me one second. And if everyone wants to do that, doing that, make sure you do have Madam Corporal Reporter's email so y'all can email her the exhibits that are admitted. She'll leave that for the record. Can everyone see this? I just see you. Okay, let me try this again. I apologize. It's okay. Now, can you see it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Officer, I'm going to show you what has been um, identified as the petitioner's exhibit 12. Uh, yes, do you recognize this document? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what is it? It's a, it's a bruising from the broomstick. Okay. And is this a true and accurate um, photograph of the um, visible injury? that you saw on Miss Sullivan on April 4th, 2022? Yes, ma'am. Okay, at this time, Your Honor, I move uh, Petitioner's Exhibit 12 into evidence. Any objections? No. Mm, it's admitted. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. All right, so uh, once you um, um, saw the visible injury, what, if anything, did you do next, officer? Um, so prior to, she advised that he slapped her and Miss Sullivan, she's, she's light skinned. So I didn't see any visible markings on there. And then when she showed me the, the markings on her lower thigh, that's when I instantly, me and, me and my partner, we instantly detained Mr. Sullivan. Okay. All right. And when you said detained, um, uh, what, if anything, did you accuse him of at that point? Uh, simple battery. Okay. Um, did you advise Ms. Sullivan um, any special instructions on that day? We were just advising her if she did not go through the, if she did not have to obtain a TPO process, then that's something that she needs to do while he is uh, being detained. Okay. And was Ms. Sullivan, phys uh, you know, visibly shaken and yes. afraid of him? Yeah, she was. Um, when we first started to talk to her, she didn't really want to say too much until you know, she finally came out and, and said what was going on. Okay. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Ms. Bristow? Just a couple. 
<clears throat> um, did you witness Mr. Sullivan hit Miss Sullivan? No, ma'am, I was not on scene. Okay. Um, did you see him holding a broomstick or anything like that? We seen the broom. We seen the broomstick. The broomstick was uh was bent. It was bent. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you see Mr. Sullivan holding it or anything like that? No, ma'am. Okay. Did you see any kind of domestic violence at all while you were there? Mm, they got into a little verbal dispute while while he was there. Um, it, she was frustrated. She was frustrated just as much as him. He was calm, but she was frustrated um, about everything that was going on. But that's it, just a verbal. Okay. Can you explain what she was frustrated about and how that argument took place? She was just basically saying she's tired of all this, all the domestic uh, disputes going on between those two. That was really it. Okay. Was she yelling? Yes. I apologize. Was she yelling at Mr. Sullivan? She was just she was just yelling out of frustration, just saying that I'm tired of this, going back and forth, and all this other stuff. That's pretty much it. We just it was just verbal. Okay. Did that appear to be someone who was scared? Yeah, she just seemed like she was very frustrated. She was tired. Okay, that's all. Uh, Sergeant McClellan, let me just ask one thing. So you said the other officer went there as a domestic standby for her to gather some things or was that officer called there on a domestic like active domestic violence call so we usually don't respond to domestic situations with one officer we always have two just in case we don't know the totality of the circumstances so he was there he was my back he was my backup uh, officer but you said she didn't want to go there by herself to collect some items so was that an active domestic violence like in progress or was it a domestic standby so she could gather some things well the the second call that was the third call that day saying that he had basically put his hands on her the second call that came out she was trying to gather some things and that's okay. when the officer responded okay that's what and you were there on the third call yes ma'am the so first she was there to gather some things for the second and then you came. okay i'm sorry go ahead uh miss hood um, Officer McCline, you didn't see any injuries on Mr. Sullivan when you came to the scene. Is that correct? No, ma'am. And um, when you did arrive at the scene, um, you did observe visible injuries, which caused you to um, detain Mr. Sullivan. Yes, ma'am. Okay. No further questions. Anything else, Ms. Bristow? Hi, Judge. Sorry, yes, So there were three calls. Do you have any idea what... What was the first one? The, the first two calls were the same. Uh, she, oh, just, okay. she just basically didn't feel comfortable. She was waiting at the uh, beginning of the cul-de-sac, waiting for an officer to respond so she can gather her things without any problems. I got you. So the first two were to gather things. Then the third one was actual, she claimed that it was a physical act of family violence. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Sergeant McClellan. You stay safe out there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Ms. Hood. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I'm I'm going to call on my second witness, which is Miss Sullivan. Um, and before we get get started, Your Honor, Mr. Release was yours here. I'm going to leave it him in here. Do you want to take Mr. Release? He just left. I don't know why. No, he's here. Okay. All right. Do you want to take him first, or do I need to put him in the waiting room? You can put him in the waiting room, Your Honor. All right. Stand by, okay. Mr. Release. We'll get you back in here. Your client first, Ms. Hood? Yes, Your Honor. And I also <laughs> want to um, note on the record, Your Honor, um, on the 6th of May, there was some evidence that was taken. Um, if Your Honor can recall, um, I, and it's my understanding that there was a stipulation to the um, police reports as well as the CAD reports, the ring videos, the 911 calls. Is that correct, Ms. Bishop? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I, I just want to just make sure so we don't have to just go through all that again. I know, and I got my system. I got my notepad from some of the other hearings. So. Okay. Okay. Very well. So, Ms. Sullivan, uh, can you go ahead and take yourself off mute? And I think, Ms. Sullivan, Mr. Sullivan, while we're at it, can y'all raise your right hands? Do you swear a firm testimony about to give is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth? Ms. Sullivan, if you could take yourself off mute and say yes. 
I may have already done this. It's been a long week. But Mr. Sullivan, how about you go? Yes. Anybody, either one of y'all that get yourself unmuted, Miss Sullivan? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. So, okay. How about you, Miss Sullivan? Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. You can put yourself back on mute. Miss Sullivan? Yes. Okay. All right. Go, go ahead for Miss Sullivan. Okay. Miss Sullivan, can you please state your name for the record? Thank you, Sullivan. And are you the name petitioner for this application for a temporary protective order, ma'am? Yes. Okay. And who is the respondent, Robert Sullivan, to you? My husband. Okay. And was Mr. Sullivan, um, were you and Mr. Sullivan living together at the time of this application that you made arising from an incident that took place on April 3rd, 2022? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to direct your attention um, as to the incident that April 3rd, 2022. You remember that date? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you also had an opportunity to hear the officer in reference to what transpired as well. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And can you tell the court um, basically what caused you to uh, file this application um, surrounding um, your husband, Robert Sullivan? Basically, I... I fear for my life. From we can't from, see you. I'm sorry, Miss Sullivan. We lost you. I fear for my life, and I just I was really afraid of him because of the fact that when the incident happened on the third, the third. Uh, Take your time. It's okay. It, I can understand that sometimes you could be nervous, and a lot of times because of something like this. Um, can cause you a lot of stress. Um, but let me just ask you, was there an argument that ensued on April 3rd? Yes. Okay. And, um, and this argument was about what? My son and him had a confrontation the weekend before where the police was called out. Where he jumped on my son. Okay. Now... Yeah. He wanted to talk about it, and I didn't. Okay, so basically, you guys were arguing about an incident involving your son, and you didn't no longer wanted to talk about it. So what did you do when he kept talking about or wanting to talk about this incident? I went upstairs and laid across the bed to calm down because I kept telling him I didn't want to talk, and he came up the stairs with the broom handle, and uh, started saying he was sick of this shit. He wanted, he he wanted, he just uh, was being very verbally abusive to me. He he pushed me back on the bed and put the pole across my neck and was pushing his body weight on me, choking me, fighting me, cussing me, and telling me he was sick of this and, and he would kill me. And I, I was so afraid. And then he would, would Okay, take your time. Take your time. I, I know this is, is hard for you to having to relive this again. Um, but the court is here to hear, you know, what transpired. He he was on top of me with the pole, with the broom handle, choking me with it, and I was kick, I couldn't breathe, and I was I was I couldn't breathe, and then he he, he kept on pushing me, pushing me, and I took my knee and hit, pushed him, hit him in between his legs, and he stood back. And when he stood back, he had put the pole, raised the pole up, and slung at me. I pushed my knee and leg up to brace the hit, and he that's when he hit me across my backside with the pole and my okay. arm. <laughs> Were you able to get out of that situation? when I guess when you describe that you have lift your knee or kicked your leg up to get out, were you able to get out of that position when he had the pole or the broom along your chest or your neck? 
once, once I kicked him and he stood back and hit the pole and I thought he was gone. He was in the, uh, he was out in the foyer. I thought he was gone and he slung the pole at me again and he, he slung the pole at me and was hitting me, pushing me and we was going up at it and he, I fell back on the stairs down on my buttocks, on my butt. And I got up and turned around and crawled out the door to call 911. Okay, so as you were trying to get out of that bedroom, he followed you, is that correct? He, he was in the foyer. I, he wasn't in the bedroom where I was. He, was. he had went out of the bedroom and standing out in the foyer. I, I thought he was gone down the stairs, but he was standing out, out in the foyer. Okay, so you were trying to get out of that situation and seek help at that point? Yes. Okay, so when you were trying to go through the foyer to get to the stairway, that is, that's when he approached you again with the broomstick. Is that correct? I have to object for leading. Yes. Okay. He really so, with him. Try not to lead so much. Okay. So once you were on, let's go back to the stairwell. So what happened while you were in the stairwell, Miss Sullivan? He's he slung the pole at me again, and we, we, he, they pushed me, pushed me with the pole, and I fell down the stairs backwards, on my buttocks, on the in the middle part of the steps, and when I, I turned around, I, I was getting up, I crawled down the steps, the rest of the steps, and went to the front door and went outside. Okay, so and when I you went outside, went I'm sorry. Were you finished? I apologize. No, well, I went outside and called 911. Okay, so um, when you called 911, did a police arrive to the scene? Yes. Okay, and um, at that time, you advised the officer what took place, is that correct? Yes. All right. Okay, and um, what happened to Mr. Sullivan on that day? He was arrested. Okay. All right. And um, once he was arrested, can you tell the court um, what took place after the April 3rd day? He came back the next day, that night with, with the officers to get his things. And he he said that he was getting, getting his, uh, he wanted his keys. And he was coming, he came that one time. He was only allowed to come that one time that night, but, but he turned around and. Okay, so when you said he was only allowed one time, um, what document are you referring to? The bond document. Okay. At this time, Your Honor, I'm going to, um, let's see already admitted if that's okay judge if i can just say i'll go to the next room but it was admitted uh at the may the sixth it's exhibit um, okay the bond order yeah exhibit okay. 11 that was exhibit 11. i'm going to go ahead and tender that right now it's already been it are you going to put it up miss bristow oh okay that was admitted already it was not being tendered it was already admitted okay. my apologies your honor so it's, okay. it's already been admitted and tendered. Well, yeah, one more for okay. I want to say, I mean, obviously, you want to use it again, Miss Bristow. I guess it's kind of refreshing your recollection. Do you see it? Um, I don't I'm, see it. Oh, are we talking about his bond conditions? I mean, that's a court. Yes. Bond right. uh -huh. Do you remember that, or do I need to pull that up again? Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. I'm not okay. Worried. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Miss son. All right. So in the special condition oh, of the no, bond, I forget, I forget the exhibit number, though. Let me see. Um, it's exhibit number 11. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. And so you indicated that this, this special condition of the bond allowed him to come to the premises one time. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, did he come to the premises more than once since that yes, order? Ma yes, ma'am. Okay. How many times would you say that he came to the location? At least five. Okay. Uh, is one of those dates uh, April 6th of 2022? Yes. Okay. 
And um, can you tell the court what happened on April 6th? I, I heard him, him talking on the phone in the backyard. I called 911. I was called 911 to tell them that he was there and wasn't supposed to be. And they they couldn't hear me, but they sent someone out. And when they sent someone out, he wasn't there anymore. He said he never seen him. But I was afraid that night. And they documented it and everything. Okay. Your Honor, um, we've already admitted and also tendered that would be exhibit 4A, which was a 911 call that was made from Tanya Sullivan regarding um, the respondent being in the backyard that night. Yes, ma'am. You agree, right, Ms. Bristow? Am I able to see the, the police report? Uh, let me see. This was the... This this is the nine one one call or the CAD report. The right. This was a nine one one call that was made. Oh, okay. I thought you said uh, the call and the police report. No, I just said the nine one one call. No, judge. Okay. okay. All right. And was there another occasion after April sixth um, that Mr. Sullivan came back onto the property? Yes, he he came back. Uh, okay. In with realtors. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, with the realtor, that was on about April the 22nd? Yes. Okay. And um, when you say a realtor, was this somebody he knew? Tell me what you know about this realtor. It was someone he knew. It was, he was coming in. My uh, Cam, my door called him coming in telling the guy he was coming in. They wanted to take pictures or something. He, But he, he told the guy that he I was coming back and he'll just leave when I come back. Okay, so basically you had a ring video which showed um, Mr. Sullivan at the home. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, Your Honor, that um, video has already been tendered uh, and that was Exhibit 8. C, um, which was the ring video with Mr. Sullivan and the real estate agent. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. Agreed. It has been previously submitted. Okay. All right. So April 25th was an occasion. You already spoke about April 6th. Um, and you also indicated earlier about an April. Was there an April 5th occurrence that took place? Uh, the April 5th was the, that was early that day when he came back with more officers to ask if he could get, he needed to get his work stuff, which he supposed to have got the day before. And he came back in with the officers uh, to get his, I stood down, they stood downstairs with me and let him come in and get his stuff. And he, wandered around and got everything and and then he he left and when he turned around and came back to the house and threw his dirty clothes at me and said can you wash these for me okay so on april 5th he not only came back with the officers but he came back a second time and threw the clothes um at your front door yes okay all right Now, um, with the April 25th, 22, Ms. Sullivan, regarding the real estate agent, um, was there anything else that Mr. Sullivan um, did in reference to violating the order that you had, that stay away order that you had in reference to the property? He changed um, the lock. Okay, so he had changed the locks um, and he was constantly coming in and out of the house. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, each of the incidents that you described, Ms. Sullivan, April 6th, April 9th, and April 25th, were you in fear of your life? 
Yes. And was there another occasion where um, Mr. Sullivan did something you, to you directly or indirectly? Let me refresh in your memory. Did anything unusual happen on April 9th of 2022? I think we lost her. Yeah, it looks like she might be frozen. Okay. So tell us, tell the court what happened involving the neighbor regarding your property. The neighbor, I had posted the order the court ordered on my door and on my uh, windows and which I was posted it to let people know that the, he wasn't supposed to be there. So if they brought him over there, but in, anyway, the neighbor came and took him down and placed it on the side of the door. And um, I called the police and I called the police because he came on my property taking down things he wasn't supposed to. Okay. Um, at this time, Your Honor, this was an exhibit that was tendered on May 6th. This would be exhibit 6C. And this was the ring video of the neighbor pulling down the bond condition in this ex parte order that Ms. Sullivan had posted on the doors and windows of the front area to make people aware. Yeah, I have that. Yeah. All right. Yes, that was previously admitted. I'm, I remember the right video. Go ahead. Okay. And Ms. Sullivan, um, it's your understanding that this neighbor was following the directions of Mr. Sullivan. Is that correct? Yes. Now, Ms. Sullivan, you spoke a lot about a lot of incidents after the April 3rd incident. Um, has there been an occasion where Mr. Sullivan has um, struck or touched you in any way prior to April 3rd? Yes, uh, several occasions. That's why I was afraid he have stomped my foot when I had a boot on my foot before. He pulled a gun on me and said he would kill me. He shot it out the window. Uh, and he's always threatened to kill me for just anything. He said that he would kill me, shoot me and my family and, and my son. Okay, so you, so you describe about an incident um, where he attempted to take a gun to you, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you recall when that may have happened? Remember what year it may yeah. have been? Like 2013. By 2013, we was driving down the road and he just pulled his gun out the back and pointed it at me and said that he, uh, he, he rolled down the window on the other side and pointed it at me and shot it out the window and said he just wanted to see if it worked. It, and fired it. It fired. I, I seen the fire out of the gun in front of me. If I hadn't moved my head, it would have hit me. And I, we got to the red light. I just jumped out and was crying and studying. He's get your crazy self back in his car. Now, the other incident that you described to the court regarding him stomping on your boot, um, do you remember what year that may have happened? Uh, like 2017, I had injured my foot at work and I was wearing a boot and I, at night I would pull the boot off and prop my foot up and he jacked me out the bed and we had a confrontation that day, a fight that day and uh, a confront and he uh, stomped on my foot. He came from across the room and stomped on my foot because he said that it wasn't broke. So, Ms. Sullivan, is it your testimony today that um, you are in fear of your safety in regards to this Mr. Sullivan? 
very, very. And because are you he doesn't fear the police. He doesn't and he he's a I, I see that they he 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 thinks he's untouchable, so he just constantly do things and know that they're gonna think he's not doing anything to me. But I, I'm fearful for my life. I'm very afraid. This is why I called 911. This is why I told them I was afraid for my safety because of things that he did to me. I'm the one who was living there with him in the, all the abusive things he'd say and do. It, it, no one experienced that and he make it sound like I'm It's okay, take your time. So you're asking the court today, Ms. Sullivan, to enter a temporary protective order? Yes, but I want them to, I don't want him to be by me ever. <laughs> and Ms. Sullivan, are you also asking the court to um, award you, award you attorney fees in reference to the prosecution of this? protective order that you had to apply for? Yes, all of this is because of him. I, I, I wouldn't even be here if he hadn't been violent to me. Uh, I'm just trying to stay alive. And he, he created all this. And at this point, Ms. Sullivan, you still have your, you have your own personal property. So there's no property in, I guess, in dispute at this point because there's no house. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Oh, but the house is finally gone? Yes, ma'am. Yay. Thank goodness. So, <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> so there's no house at issue. So at this point, you want to ask the court that you continue to maintain your personal property, which is the vehicle. Is that correct? Yes. And what type of vehicle do you have, Ms. Sullivan? Uh, SRX Cadillac. Okay. And um, you're also asking the court um, for you to um, retain all the personal property that's in your possession. Is that correct? Yes. I'm not sure that this is appropriate when we've got a pending divorce action. Yeah. I, I'm, this was, this was Ms. Sullivan. So I'm thinking so, Ms. Hood and Ms. Bristow. It, if there was anything like somebody could keep, you know, the kitchen table or the living room furniture, no matter what's in there, I would still uh, defer to the judge here in the divorce to make distribution of the property, you know, on a on a permanent basis. So I'm not gonna like decide anything final on any kind of property. If I say yes, you can keep the couch, but I'd say, you know, but you know. I guess Judge Ellerby looks, yeah, Judge Ellerby uh, obviously can make any changes to that regarding any of that that, that she would like. Okay, so it'll be just temporary basis. Right, just until, yeah, basically until the divorce that, like she said, I think it's in uh, December, so right. All right. No further questions, Your Honor, for this witness. Ms. Bristow? Um, Ms. Sullivan, you said in 2013, he pointed a gun at you and fired the gun. Is that correct? Yes. Did you call the police for that incident? No. We okay. was driving down the street. Okay, but you said that you stopped and got out of the vehicle. Is that correct? He stopped the vehicle. He was driving. Okay, you, you got out of the vehicle. I jumped, out. I jumped out. I jumped out of the car. Okay. In Alpharetta, Georgia. I jumped out of the car on Holcomb Bridge at the red light and got out. Okay, I, so after you got out of the vehicle, you still didn't call the police. Is that correct? I didn't have a phone at that time. Everything was still in the car. But no, I did not. I, okay. I, I got back in the car with him. For, for years, this has been going on. It's nothing that I'm trying to make up. It's, this has been going on and I, it's things that I didn't say. So these are one of the incidents that I, I will say. Okay, so when you did get back home and you had access to a telephone, you still did not call the police, correct? I did call the police a couple of times. Yet, no, I did not, no. 
Okay. Um, and so you were alleging that he attempted to murder you during that incident, correct? Murder me through which incident, ma'am? The gun incident in 2013. I said he pulled the gun out at me and said he fired it out the window. He didn't, I didn't say he was trying to murder me. I said he pointed it out the window at me. I okay. seen the fire of the gun. I didn't say he said anything. Okay, but you stated that if you didn't move your head, he would have hit you. If with I said that if I hadn't moved my head. Correct. So are you alleging that he attempted to murder you? Uh, I would think so. If the gun is pointed at me and I see the okay. fire. Okay, but you remained married to him after that incident. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay. That's what abuse is called. Okay, now during this litigation, as well as the divorce action, you got a U-Haul to remove all of your personal belongings as well as some other marital property items from the residence. Yeah, I'm gonna to object to relevancy on this. Um, I think it goes to her character and her credibility. I, I don't know she how this is going to go towards belief. the character, Your Honor, because this has okay, no relevancy on the speaking. issue of the, um, the abuse and violence. Uh, I think we talked earlier in reference to the issue regarding the property. That is not at issue. So okay, I'm, I'm just trying to figure to out what the U-Haul and everything else has to do with the abuse. All right. I'm now going to speak. So I'm okay. objecting to relevancy in okay. reference to it. You know, I haven't heard the question. <laughs> what was the question? I asked her if she used a U-Haul to remove her belongings from the home. I am showing that she has been taking the position with this court since day one, as well as showing photographs to this court since day one that she never removed her belongings out she never actually moved out of the home she always intended to live there and that goes to her credibility and her character your honor I, again i'm going to object this doesn't this th that has no heard the objection material in reference to the issue regarding the abuse uh we're here today in reference to see whether or not an occurrence took place on the third uh, we're here to hear if there's any further acts uh, as it relates to Mr. Sullivan, and again, I object to the relevancy. Well, you also asked questions about the personal property, and you're asking the judge to grant her personal property on a temporary basis. So I think that I can ask questions about it. So I'm going to overrule it, but we're going to get through this like quickly because I remember this was all about the house. I don't want to relitigate right. much about, about the house, but we're going to get this very narrow and get it to it. Go ahead, Ms. Bristow. Understood. Ms. Sullivan. You got a U-Haul to remove all of your belongings as well as some marital property from the mar marital residence during this action. Isn't that correct? I did not. I moved things that was mine that I brought into the marriage both times, things I purchased. So no, I did not move marital things. Everything that was there in the house when he re re returned back was his. And the pictures showed that. Okay. You took the entire bedroom set from the home. Is that correct? It was mine. Okay. Do you have receipts to show that you were the only one that paid for those? It it, it doesn't matter. It was mine. And we so, were married over 10 years. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Let me interrupt. When, so uh, here it is when you're across, when Ms. Bristow asks you a question, the first answer out of your mouth needs to be yes or no. And then you can offer an explanation. And I'll decide what's marital property or if it should have been taken or not or whatever. But it, at this point, just a yes or no, and then you can offer yes. a little bit of explanation. Yes. yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I have receipts. Okay. Now, you took the bedroom frame, the mattress, the dresser, the TV stand. Yes, I have receipts. Let me finish. I have receipts. Let yes, me finish. I have receipts. Stop, stop. I, let me finish. Everybody, okay. One at a time. The court reporter can only take that one person at a time. Ms. Sullivan, you let her finish asking the question completely, then answer. Go ahead, Ms. Bristow, start over. Isn't it true that you took the bed, frame, the mattress, the dresser, the TV stand with a built-in fireplace? Is that correct? Yes, and you cannot take a bed if you don't take the complete bedroom set. You said the complete bedroom set. So why are you trying to break it down into detail? Ms. Sullivan, Ms. Sullivan, don't argue with her, please. Ma'am, just answer her questions. Yes, I Ms. said Hood. yes. Ms. Hood I is taking, yes. 
I said yes. Don't argue with me either, Miss Sullivan. Today is not the day. I am not the one, ma'am. Okay? Every, yes. Not just lawyers. Everybody's going to show some nice decorum. Now, Miss Hood is actively taking notes. She's going to ask follow-up questions, okay? So let her do her job. You answer Miss Bristow's questions. Now, Miss Sullivan, these items were purchased during the marriage. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You also took the washer and the dryer. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. That was purchased during the marriage. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You also took the garage freezer. Is that correct? Why are we going through this? Yes. Okay. That was also purchased during the marriage, correct? I was married to him over 10 years. Yes, it was a lot of things purchased during the marriage. Okay. Um, you also took some televisions, is that correct? If he want a detail of what I took, why you just don't say that? Stop, Miss Sullivan, one more time. This isn't for you to argue with Miss Bristow. This is for you to answer her questions. Miss Hood will then ask follow up questions. We're going to get through this. Stop fighting it, Miss Sullivan. Go ahead, Miss Bristow. Now, are you aware that? taking all of these items out of the home is in violation of the standing order in the divorce action? I had put down things that I would take just in case before the, the divorce order was even in place because I know how he operated. I know what he did before. And I did put down my bed because I brought a bed into the marriage that I purchased on my own. Yes. Was there yes. ever a court order providing you permission to remove any of these marital property items from the home during the divorce action? The divorce action was in place afterwards. Okay, my order was in place first. Okay, you took the marital property from the home after you filed for divorce, is that no, correct? No, he filed for divorce. He filed uh, for Ms. divorce. Miss Sullivan, Miss Sullivan, Miss Sullivan, Miss Sullivan, Miss Sullivan. Sullivan, I am begging you. Let Miss Bristow finish her question. First word out of your mouth, yes or no. And then please let Miss Hood do her job. I'm going to move on. I think the pleadings speak for themselves. Um, now, it has been your position and you have maintained to this court throughout this entire temporary protective order that you never actually moved out of the marital residence. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But you did, in fact, move all of that furniture, correct? Yes. So that position was in fact false, correct? No, it was not. Please explain. No, no it was not because I can, I can take anything I want at my house. When I, if, if I'm taking it to move it or give it to someone, you don't know my son was the, I was not the only adult living there. So the things you're asking me, did I move things out of the house? I did, but that doesn't mean I moved out. I was still there. I okay. was still staying there. Okay, where were you sleeping? It was several days. Objection, Your Honor. I don't know the relevancy in reference to where she's staying. Um, I really don't want the information where she was staying anyway, because this man has been harassing her for over the years. So I'm not going to allow my client to divulge any information about where she was staying at that moment, Your Honor. All right. So, Ms. Bristow, um, I'm, 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 I'm again objecting to the relevancy. I don't understand why we keep questioning regarding this. Um, the property, the house is not at issue. Um, Ms. Bristow still wants to ask questions regarding something that doesn't have anything to do with the violence and the domestic abuse arising out of April 3rd. She's been lying to this court since day one, and it goes to character and credibility. She did not, not, she's lying. not lying. Basically, one she horse, one person. rider, Miss Miss King. One horse, one rider, and the rider's been Miss Hood. Now, okay, okay. Miss, can we let's stand by. Break? Let's stand by. Let's stand by. Let's stand by. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Okay. I remember this whole stuff back in the earlier hearing. Miss Zoller, you've got to answer the question. Miss Hood, 
is a wonderful lawyer who's going to ask you questions after this, okay? Let her get through it. I get it. There are bond conditions. I've seen the bond order. I've looked it up, and I see there's no court date. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, I don't know why I keep going blurry. Uh, there's no court date pending in front of Judge Morrison. Uh, so I checked that there's not a new order there. But we need to get through this. And no, ma'am, Miss Sullivan, you can't just do what you want to do. But there's a divorce file, no matter who filed it. Neither one of you can with property. Judge Ellerby will decide and make that decision, the final decision on what is marital property. Not you, not Mr. Sullivan, not Ms. Bristow, not Ms. Hood. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's a standing order, so you're not supposed to be doing anything with anything. So we're going to leave that to Judge Elby. You're going to answer her questions. We're going to get through this, and we're getting out of here. Go ahead, Ms. Bristow. Do you currently live in the state of Georgia, Ms. Sullivan? You can just answer something in general. You know, I, I, there is the bond condition, so you don't have to. I don't need to know. Uh, your Honor. Place of I, don't I just want to know no, if she's you're muted. In Georgia, because I do believe that it is relevant to this action, because obviously this temporary protective order is placed in Georgia. Okay. I don't want to address Miss Sullivan. I, I, you know, so and she's just asking if you live in Georgia. I, I care less what state you live in. Don't answer that. Don't answer. Okay, one horse, and I hear a second. Oh, rider. I'm sorry. I thought I was on mute. I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. okay. So it's not giving. I do not want you to give your your address away. Prefer not to answer. Yeah, because okay. It, 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 Wait, it you just said that, that I'm yeah. still the I'm still the victim here, and it doesn't matter where I live. <laughs> I don't, know what, I, I, understand. I don't know what is going on with people in general. Ms. Sullivan, leave your camera on. Ms. Sullivan. Ms. Sullivan. She's having problems, dip, technical difficulties, Your Honor. This is nothing that she's doing intentional. Ms. Sullivan. Hold on, I'm trying to get there. Just, just turn your camera back on. That button that you hit to turn it off, hit that button to turn it back on. So let's just start your video, okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Ms. Sullivan, you have refused to answer a question. I can take a negative inference or whatever I want to with that. That's fine. You can do that. Ms. Sullivan, turn your camera around so I can see your face. I don't know how you turn if you got to turn your phone around or whatever you got to do. Now, nobody is making any insinuations. No, you're a victim. You're not a victim. Anything like that. I just want you to answer her questions. Just like Mr. Sullivan is going to answer Ms. Hood's question. Go ahead, Ms. Brissa. I'll wait for her to fix her camera, Judge. Now take yourself off mute and don't touch anything else, Ms. Sullivan. Your Honor, I just want my objection to be noted. Um, I do not want my client to respond to a question um, to uh, impute in reference to her um, safety. Um, this <laughs> is a matter involving a domestic abuse and it is not in her interest to divulge any information about where she resides, whether it's in the state of Georgia, whether it's in Florida or wherever else. This Ooh, is for the protection of the client. 
This is for the protection of the client. It might not be in Florida, Miss Hood, especially down there around uh, but Fort Myer. I understand. I'm not making your prevailing address. Go ahead, Miss Bristow. Next question, please. Yes. Um, Miss Sullivan, have you been previously diagnosed with bipolar disorder? With what? Bipolar disorder? No, ma'am. Okay. Have never. Okay. Have you ever taken he medication? Has. He has. Have you ever taken medication for bipolar disorder? No, I have not. He has. Okay. Have you ever been diagnosed with any other mental illness? I have. I don't have any me mental illness. I have a lot of abuse and physical. And uh, I have high blood pressure, heart condition. Okay. Have you ever been physically violent with Mr. Sullivan? No, not, no. Okay, have you ever hit him with a broom? No. Okay. Now you stated that he has a history of being physically violent with you. Other than what has brought us here today, have you called the police on him and due to any other instance of physical violence? In 2017, I called the police and he stood in front of me and threatened me to hang up the phone. He said, don't call the police to his house. I would open up the front door to tell them to, to and call the police because I know he didn't want me to do that. And I would open up the front door and he would threaten me to put the phone down and close the door. I was okay. afraid. I was afraid. That's okay. what that's what they call abuse. Okay, so did you contact the police that day? I've called the police a couple of times and I've hung up. That's what I just said, Miss Lily. Okay, but you don't have any other police reports from any other instances prior to the act that we are here today for, correct? When it's just 2017 from the 1911 call that I made, one or two what I made that I hung up on, they didn't come out. Okay, so you don't have any police report from that then, correct? Because the police did not actually arrive on scene, is that correct? I said, no ma'am, no ma'am. Okay. Now, Miss King, is she related to you? Objection, what's the relevancy on this, Your Honor? They're asking for attorney's fees. What's the relevancy of this judge? I'm trying to figure out how it's relevant to this matter. If you're going to ask for attorney's fees and her family member is representing her, it's relevant. So I'm supposed to represent her for free, even if I was? I, Listen, I don't need to answer your questions. This this is between me and Ms. Hood, and then the judge makes the decision. It's really not hard. She's related to you, I think. She is. I put that on the record. Your niece. Is King not? I think her niece. Am I right, Ms. Sullivan? Okay, right. Go ahead. Next question. Miss Sullivan, Miss King is your niece. Is that correct? You got to take yourself off mute. Yes. Okay. Now, are you getting a deal on attorney's fees for her representing you in this case? Miss King is not my attorney. Miss Hood is my attorney. Miss King is the advisor. I understand. Did she lower her hourly rate to represent you? Ms. King did, did not lower her rate because she's not my attorney. So, Ms. Hood is my attorney. Okay, so Ms. King is here today and every other hearing for free. Is that correct? Ms. Hood is my attorney. You asked me what she's my attorney. Ms. Hood is my attorney. Okay, Ms. King has made it very clear that she is also representing you today. So is Ms. King billing you for her time in representing you? What, what? <clears throat> Have you paid attorney's fees for Ms. King to represent you in this action? It's yes or no. Yes or no? Have you paid attorney's fees for Ms. King to represent you in this action? Ms. Sullivan. I, 
I'm, I'm really upset at the fact that this is even going on. Why does this got to do with the, the crime? Ms. Sullivan, answer the question. Ms. Sullivan. I, I, I answered the question. I said, no, she wasn't my attorney. Why would no, I give her you, money? Ms. Sullivan, my... she asked you a specific question about paying. No. No, no. I haven't paid her anything. Gotcha. Next question. Have you paid Ms. Hood any attorney's fees for representing you today? You can't ask me that. Why I did not ask you, have Robert paid you anything? Oh Ms. Has Robert Robert paid you anything? Ms. Hood, Ms. Hood, get get a hold of her. She's got to answer these questions because we are not going yet till five o'clock. Can we can we take a break so we can talk to her? Cause she can we take a break. I'm going to object. I want her to answer my question before they take a break and go talk to her about exactly what I'm asking. Answer the question and then you'll take a break. Answer the question, Ms. Silva. What have you paid in attorney's fees? Ms. Sullivan. Ms. Sullivan, you will answer me. Now you muted yourself. Yes. yes. What? have you paid in attorney's fees? I have paid uh, over $2,000. What have you paid? What is over 2,000? 50,000 is over 2,000? I said over 2,000 I've paid into attorney's fees. Okay, what is over 2,000? What does that mean? Three, three millions over 2,000. What amount have you paid? 2,000 or more. 2000 I'm not exact amount but I know I've given over 2000 Have you paid 2500 Yes Have you paid 3000 No not yet 2600 Ms Sullivan 2600 No Okay, 2,500. All right, go ahead, Ms. Bristow. Well, I'll tell you what. Very, I have very... a question and then I'm done with my question. Okay, okay, oh, okay, great then, go ahead. Ms. Sullivan, do you know that if you have attorney's invoices prepared today to present to the court that I may review? You did what? Do you know if you have attorney's fees invoices, like receipts to, pre to present to the court today that I may review for what you have paid? No. Did you ask us for that earlier? Miss Sullivan, you... just answer her question. No, I do not. No, Thank no. You. All right. No. Anything else, Miss Bristow? No. All right. Ms. Hood, any follow up? Uh, just a few questions. Okay. Uh, Miss Sullivan, um, you were asked uh, a series of questions regarding some property um, that was removed from the home. You remember that? Yes. Okay. And you indicated earlier that you had, um, I guess, did an application in your TPO in reference to items that um, you wanted to keep in your possession. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And at that time, um, you were unaware in reference to um, the standing order or whatever documentation that you had received later, because when you submitted the application, it was, um, be, you know, shortly after April 3rd. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and you also indicated earlier that um, there were some items that you had brought into the home um, when you and Mr. Sullivan decided to, um, I guess, um, Remarried. 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 Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and you also indicated that you had a son that was living in the home, correct? Yes. And he had some items in the house as well? Yes. Okay. Now, um, opposing counsel talked about a lot of things that was allegedly taken. Um, but do you recall whether there were other bedrooms and bedroom suits that were inside the home? Yes, we had a five bedroom house and they were all fully furnished. Okay. And so those other bedrooms had beds in them. Is that correct? Correct. 
All right. And there was also a formal living room. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And, and that property is still in the home. Is that correct? It was before they took it. <laughs> okay. And in reference to the, um, there was a living area in the bedroom where there was like a, I'm assuming that there were sofas and other things um, that were inside the home. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and that property was in the home as well. Yes. Okay. So you said before it was took. So what happened with all those properties that were inside the home? Well, Miss Miss Lily announced at the last that he was. Uh, they were. Miss Sullivan, does not matter what Miss Bristow said? You answer her question from your knowledge. That that's from my knowledge. I don't know. That the thing. And your answer is you don't know. Your answer is you don't know. Go ahead, Miss. Okay, so at one time or another, there was. Um, a, what about the uh, the um, um, kitchen furniture? Or the the what happened to that? Or was that still in the home? The dining room set was still there. Two living room sets. Three bedroom sets were still there. All, all the appliances, everything was still there. Refrigerator, stove, oven, microwave. And Ms. Sullivan, um, she also questioned you in reference to your attorney fees. You remember that? Yes. Okay. And at, at such time, you've only paid $2,500. Is that correct at this yes. point? Yes. And you're aware that you're before the court on your final hearing. Is that correct? Yes. And that you have incurred additional expenses um, from your counsel in reference to pursuing this TPO at this time. Is that correct? Yes. And additionally, you understood that um, there were other proceedings prior to this date that you had incurred expenses since the $2,500 that you provided. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you were aware that there were at least five or six different recess dates pertaining to your case. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You were before the court on April 22nd. Is that correct? Yes. And that was the first date of the hearing. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then that case was reset to May 6th. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And then that case was reset again um, until I believe July 1st. Is that correct? Yes. Um, but in, in but prior to the July 1st date, you were before the court on May 10th as a result of Mr. Sullivan contempt action. Is that correct? Yes. And you uh, incurred additional expenses as a result of that? Yes. Okay. And after the May 10th, um, as you said earlier, there was a July 1st date. Yes. And that was reset to July 8th. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And there were additional expenses that you incurred as a result of your attorney being present for that day. Yes. Okay. And you're asking this court to enter a TPO. Yes. Yes, ma'am. No Please. further questions. Can you follow up with Bristol? Just a couple. Ms. Sullivan, what day did you remove your property from the marital residence? I never got a chance to remove everything that I got, I needed and wanted because he changed a lot. Ms. Sullivan, okay. what day did you remove the property? It was done. Uh, did you remove the, the bedroom suit? Are you are, are you texting with someone right now, Miss Sullivan? She's no. looking at something, uh, Miss Bristow. No, I mean, Miss no. Miss Bristow, Miss Sullivan. 19th. What day did you remove the property? The nineteenth. What is it? May nineteenth. May nineteenth. I mean, I mean, not eight, uh, uh, April. 
Can I ask what you're looking at, Ms. Sullivan? I'm looking at the phone, Ms. Briscoe. Okay, are you currently getting text messages from your attorneys? No, ma'am, I'm sure not. I'm, I'm not that. I, I, I'm not that equipped to be able to flip back and forth. I'm sorry that you think that, but I'm not. If when now, I do it, it I, I can't do that. Oh, man, stop. Next now, question. When you were removing your property from the marital residence, a police officer showed up. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And the police officer made you aware that there is a standing order in place. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you were aware that a standing order was in place then. And I also showed him my paperwork from my from my paperwork from the uh, bond where it was I had put at the bottom of my bond stipulations that what things that I wanted to take. Okay, but I just want to be clear for the court: you were aware that there was a standing order in place, correct? Of what I wanted to take, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, again, you don't have any attorney's fees invoices for me to review today for your request of attorney's fees. Is that correct? No, no, ma'am. Okay, that's all I have. Ms. Hood. I don't have any further questions for the witness, Your Honor. All right. Uh, thank you. Next witness or anything else, Ms. Hood? No, the... Petitioner restaurant. Ms. Brooke, though. 